Hebrews 10. I have a simple message from Daddy. Something he wants to warn us and prepare us about. And the Bible says something specific, that a house divided will not stand. And in that house of division, he's talking about, listen, if your house is divided within you, you're easily used. Somebody get it? Where there's doubt, unbelief, selfish, anything that would cause division in your temple, the enemy, he knows it. He knows that if you're divided in you, he can use you to cause division. Amen? Glory to God. And in Hebrews 10, 26, I need this just a little bit lower, please. Hello? Okay. Hebrews 10, 26. Would you speak that with me, please? If we what? Sin willfully. In other words, if you choose to accept the voice of the presence of evil, amen? If you choose, that's your choice. You accept it. You listen to it and you obey it. You willfully sin. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. In other words, you've just walked away. Come on, read it with me. But a certain, what? Fearful expectation of judgment and fire indignation will devour the adversaries. In other words, you can expect if you willfully sin that you will reap what you just sowed. Even if you repent, you still will reap. Of course, the quicker you repent, the better. The longer it takes you to repent, the more you're going to reap. Verse 28. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Or how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine and I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. 31. It is a fearful expectation of falling to the hands of the living God. But recall the former days in which you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. Partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations and partly while you became companions of those who were treated. For you have compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. For you have need of what? Therefore do not what? Cast away your confidence. Confidence in who? The Lord, amen, which has great reward. For you have need of what? Endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Everybody has an assignment every single day. There are simple assignments. You complete the assignment, something's waiting for you. You can complete the assignment, something's waiting for you. Doesn't mean God's going to release it that day, but he's building up for a release. Amen? For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe in the saving of the soul. Willful sin is the exchange of the presence of God for the presence of evil. In this, people just... It's like, it's a common thing to them. It shouldn't be common to me and you to willfully sin. Does somebody get it? It should be a terrible thing for me and you. The devil cannot make you do anything. 
So don't tell me the devil made you do it. <laughs> Amen. He can't make you do anything but influence your desire to rebel against the oracles of God and fulfill the desires of the flesh. He can only influence. He cannot make you do anything. Amen. In this, individuals reject the character of Christ and then are unable to reach a level of conversion. And we've talked about this before. What are you converting? Your soul. Your soul. Your soul become contaminated. Am I able to reach the level of conversion to what? Overcome the use of harmful tongue, the use of harmful attitude. People become the reactors instead of responders. They're always in a state of recovering from sowing in the flesh. It's like they can never get out of it. It's constant. They're self-promoters, short-sighted, arrogant, and prideful. They're living out of the head knowledge and the corruptible side of the soul and not of the spirit. In this, there, the person comes into a place of instability, can't hold on to discipline, and they're inconsistent. Willfully sin. Let me tell you, the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. It just takes a little bit of influence, a little bit of compromise, and there's willful sin. Again, everyone say, the devil cannot make me do anything. That means you got a choice. And if you have a choice and you're choosing to sin except the voice of the stranger, then it's willful sin. You are walking away from the presence of God and you're exchanging the presence of God for the presence of evil. Amen? 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel 15, 22. So Samuel said to Saul, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Hello. Behold, to obey is better than what? Sacrifice. See, many people put that in reverse. To heed in the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of what? Witchcraft. So willful sin is witchcraft. Why? Because it's influenced by the presence of evil. And stubbornness is an iniquity which brings a what? Curse. And idolatry. In other words, an idol. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he will reject you from being a king. Now check that out. That is a position of authority as a warrior. Does the enemy know that? Oh, yes, he does. He's just waiting for the next open door. Rebellion is of sin. Stubbornness is a curse. And the idol of self. Again, fear and pride is religious spirits that have a form of godliness with no power over selfish desires. Lack of endurance. Remember, there's something important that we must understand. All sin is a curse. It brings a curse. Every curse opens doors to deeper influence. Unless it's broke and repented. Now remember, repentance means turn away. So if you keep repeating the same old thing again, there is no repentance. In fact, many have sought that with tears and God couldn't forgive them because they kept doing the same thing. Matthew 7. Don't blame somebody else for your reactions. You are responsible for you. That's why the Bible says you must work out your own salvation. The devil didn't make you do it. And neither did anyone else. You chose to do it. Matthew 7, please. And verse 21.
You know, the word says a curse without a cause has no effect. <laughs> but if you cause the curse, what's the enemy trying to do? Get you to get cursed. Verse 21. Not everyone who says to be Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done many wonders in your name? Have you not allowed me to pray for people? Have you not allowed me to feed people? Have you not allowed all these things? I've passed out Bibles. I've done all of these things, Lord. Then I'll declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Depart what? Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. What is lawlessness? Is it a sin? It's willful sin. It's willful sin. Depart from me, you who practice willful sin. This is not an area where a person makes a mistake. This is an area where a person constantly repeats. It's a curse. Can God let anyone in heaven with curses? No. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings in mind and does them, hello, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, beat on the house, and it did not fall. For it is founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. That means it's constantly divided. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Again, lawlessness is rebellion. It is willful sin opens the door to a curse. Whether you know it or not. <laughs> Does anybody understand that? Whether you know it or not, it's still the enemy knows. You know, the word warns us about cursing with our tongues. Out of your mouth will expose you. You'll know them by their fruits. You'll know them by their words. You'll know them by their desires. You'll know them. Amen? James chapter 1. Lack of self-examination. People are looking at everybody else's plank in their, their eyes when they got national grand forests on their own. Verse 19. Let's speak it. So then, uh, chapter 1, verse 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let everyone, every man be what? Swift to what? Hear. Slow to speak. Oh, my God, help us. Slow to what? Wrath. Hallelujah. Why? Because if they would hear, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Oh, hallelujah. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Now, is this Bible speaking to an unbeliever or a believer? Believers. believers. But be doers of the word, meaning obedient, and not just hearers, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. His natural face. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks in the perfect law of liberty, freedom, and continues in it, is not a forgetful hearer, nor is he a forgetful doer. <laughs> this one will be blessed in what he does. If any of you among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion for God and the Father is this, to visit orphans, widows, in their trouble. And to what? Keep oneself unspotted from the influence of the world. Whoa. Willfully rejects divine order of God's word. Can't walk what they talk. All the good talkers. But not walkers. Amen. Puffed up by knowledge. Living out of the head, not out of the spirit. Hebrews 12. Verse 25, please. Hebrews 12, 25. Let's speak it together. 
See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Everyone will be shaken. Everyone is being shaken, one way or another. Amen? We're being tested and we're being tried for genuineness. He's looking for genuine followers, not wannabes or make-believes. Not puffed up, prideful. Not boasting oneself. He's looking for genuine followers. Amen? Faithful to the end. That complete every assignment. And they're keepers of their vows. I'm going to say that again. Keepers of their vows. It's amazing how many people make a commitment and then break it. Like, it's okay. Having no idea that they have become accursed. Even when they repent, they still will reap. Does everybody understand that? If you ever notice, you never, you stop paying a bill. Amen? You might have repented to God, but they're still coming after you, aren't they? God might say, yeah, I forgive you, but you're going to still reap and you're going to still pay it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalm 36. This is reality. We've got to awake to this. Why wouldn't anybody willfully sin? I just couldn't help myself. Yes, that word self was there. No dominion. Psalm 36 and verse 1. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. What's a transgression? Someone that acts from the influence of the presence of evil. Amen. There's no fear of God before his eyes. Hello. No connect. No connect. Listen, if you don't connect, literally, if you are not connected in the morning, you will be easily provoked. Easily. For he flatters himself in his own eyes when he finds out his iniquity or his curses and when he hates. The words of his mouth are wickedness and deceitful. Oh, they manifest. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He, dis he devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. See, when the lack of fear of God is there, then there's a lack of hatred for evil. No fear of God before them. They're an open door to deep influence due to the mouth and the choices and their willingness and their willful sinning. These are things that we must examine ourselves with. 1 Timothy chapter 3. You know, the Bible says that unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. Amen. We must allow him to build that house. That's us. In verse 1, is everybody there? This is a faithful saying. If a man or woman desires a position of a leader, I want to share this leader because it's not just a bishop. It's a leader, someone who wants to be lead. Amen? He desires a good thing. 
A leader then must be blameless. Hello. A husband of one wife. Temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospital, and able to teach. Not given to wine. Not violent. Not greedy for money. But what? Gentle. Not quarrelsome. Not covetous. covetous. One who rules his own house. Hello. Well. His own what? Temple. And having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? That's powerful. Not a novice. That's being puffed up with pride. He fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Now, this is powerful. Moreover, he must have a what? Good testimony among those who are outside. Lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Desire to be a leader, it's a good thing. But you can't be a leader without ruling your own temper. You'll never become a leader until you have rule over your own temple. You haven't earned that position yet to tell people what to do and how to do it. Is everybody okay? That individuals are puffed up by knowledge, even by experiences. Hey, you can have loads of experience, man. Anybody can, anybody can pray for someone and something happen. Amen? Even God uses animals. <laughs> Never judge by what God does. Judge by fruits of the person. Amen? I do not judge by miracles. I do not judge by anything else. People got testimonies. That's cool. But I still don't judge by the testimony. I judge by the fruits of an individual. And so should everybody else. We are fruit inspectors. Amen? They're puffed up by knowledge, talents, abilities to be even used by God. But they carry great words of carnality. And it's carnal wisdom, but the lack of relationship will reveal itself. Amen? The lack of connect will reveal itself. Isaiah 47. Can you imagine? Look at how many people have student loans. And most of them, it's because they didn't finish. They go to school. They get a loan. Ah, that's enough. I'm good. <laughs> okay. So you didn't complete it when God sent you there and made a way for you to get a grant. Amen. Many people get grants and then they have to pay them back because they didn't complete That's vow breaking. Amen? Believe me, these things follow us, don't they? Look at how many people hold child support. That follows us. Thank God that's over. <laughs> I never should have married that person from the beginning. Well, you should have asked God first. <laughs> I didn't know God. Yeah, that's a bummer. <laughs> you know him now, you can repent anyways. <laughs> and that's God to make a way. Isaiah 47, verse 8. Let's speak it, please. Therefore, hear this now, you who are given to pleasures, who dwell securely, who say in your heart, I am and there is no one else besides me. Oh, my goodness. I shall not sit as a widow, nor shall I know the loss of children. In other words, we're going to be together. These two things shall come to you, he says. In a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widow. They shall come upon you in their fullness because of the multitude of your what? Sorcery or your witchcraft. Does everybody get it? 
Look at, now remember, sorcery is also associated with black magic, witchcraft, sorcery, which is what? Pharmakia, which is drugs. Look what it does. This is exactly what it does right here. Amen? Causes divorces, causes separations, causes loss of children. Well, let me tell you, rebellion will do the same thing. Because it's willful sin. Because of the multitude of your sorceries, for the great abundance of your enchantments. For you have trusted in your wickedness, and you have said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge have warped you. and You have said in your heart, I am, and there is no one else beside me. Therefore, evil shall come upon you. You shall not know from where it arises. And trouble shall fall upon you. And you will not be able to put it off. And desolation will come upon you suddenly, which you shall not know. Now, that's pretty intense, isn't it? That ought to put shaking in people. Rebellion is a dick and addiction. Divorce, loss of children. Whether you know it or not, it's happening. Most of the time when we were out there using and doing all kinds of stuff, it was a moment of false pleasure. Amen? Not realizing the reaping and the consequences of everything that we were doing. People unknowingly practice evil with a deep influence from evil because of the curse of willful sinning. Matthew 22, verse 1. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And some tell his servants to call those who were invited. Invited means called to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. And again, he sent out other servants saying, Tell those who are invited or called, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made what? Light of it. Why? No reverence. Lack of reverence. They made light of it. And they went their own ways. One to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious. And he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. But those who were called, were invited, were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there that did not have the on wedding garments. In other words, his garments were different. They were defiled. So he said to him, friend, and you know, he said it to Judas, friend, how did you come into here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said to the servant, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing in the teeth for many are called or invited, but few are chosen. They were not serious. They didn't comprehend the consequences that of the reaping. Many were invited into the training, but not many completed. Hello? Many invited into the training, but not many completed. Romans 16. Verse 17, please. Let's speak it. Now I urge you, brother, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned, and what? Avoid them. Listen. You know somebody's whatever? Avoid them. Don't go provoke. Avoid. Let God deal with them. Amen? Amen? Avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ. 
but their own belly. And that by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Very powerful. Again, in this, <laughs> avoid. Avoid it. Everybody knows. Listen, the Spirit's always telling us what's getting ready to happen. Avoid it. I can't, look, at people come into church, they have a tendency to keep that same seat. Is somebody sitting in it? Don't freak. Avoid it. Hello? Who cares? You're in my space. Oh, you poor little thing. It's a good day to die. Does somebody understand? That's so foolish and stupid. Foolish. Avoid it. Forgive, bless, and walk away. Don't push him out of the seat. And don't start the seat on fire either. God will take care of all that. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4. <laughs> Avoid those that are rebellious, willful sinning, proud, arrogant, and ugly. Because when an individual is like that, they're ugly. <laughs> Ephesians 4. And we've heard the saying the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? <laughs> We're to be wiser than the enemy. Amen? Don't let them outwit you, make you look, look an idiot. Ephesians 4.20. What does it say? But you're not so learned Christ. You say you have, but you really aren't expressing it. If indeed you had heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? Now, does everybody get it? If you really learn Christ, what does he say? That you're putting off the old man. Praise God. That you put off concerning your what? Former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. If you learned Christ. That means it's constant. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Does somebody get it? There's a difference. That's called righteous anger. You don't express it. Amen? You might get angry with him. Eh, forget it. It ain't worth it. I forgive and I bless. God will take care of it. Why? Because I know that when I do that, God's fiery coals are going to come on that person somehow. Something's going to happen. I don't have to fight that battle. Does everybody get it? But because of pride, my flesh is bigger than yours. Hello? My pride is bigger than yours. My arrogance is bigger than yours. Let's see who can outbeat each other in arrogance and pride. All right, let's do it with our tongue. Spitting on each, one, each other and everyone else and spewing everything and just doesn't gratify. It's false, foolish. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, glory. <laughs> let's go a little further here. Verse 27, what does it say? Do not Give place to the devil. Okay, we can close up and just get the heck out of here then. <laughs> Do not give place to the devil. Say that with me. Do not give place to the devil. Hmm. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. And let no corrupt <coughs> word Proceed from your mouth. 
I didn't say it wouldn't happen in your mind, but don't let it come here. That's why it says cast down those thoughts and imaginations and those things that you really want to say. Amen? Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace that he hears. And do not what? Grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were resealed for redemption. And let all what? Bitterness. Everyone say it with me. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be what? Oh, my goodness, be kind to one another. <laughs> yes. Be kind to one another. Tender-hearted even. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you. Not accepted. See, when it lear not learning Christ means not accepting the true reality of Christ's integrity and his character. His humility and his surrender. Not accepting it. Still can't deny self, missing the meeting place of full exchange. Not willing to turn from rebellious sin. Still proving and promoting self. Listen, when uh, things occur, don't blame anything or anyone. Amen? And if you're at a, a, a crossing and the light turns red, it means don't walk across. Does everybody get it? If you choose to walk across and get hit by a car, you cannot blame the driver. Hallelujah. Revelation 16, we'll close here. Verse 12, then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great Euphrates river, a river, and its water was dried up so that the way of kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of what? Demons. Performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blesses he who watches and keeps his what? Garments clean. Thus he walked naked, and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to a place called in Hebrew Armageddon. So look at these spirits of demons are being released even now. There are more and more demonic forces around the earth. And God will allow certain things to shake, to expose, to chase, and to test. Remember, he's looking for those who are sold, S-O-U-L-E-D, out. Sold out and genuine. Genuine. One of the things that will prevent that from approval of God as an individual who lives by emotion. Well, this is how I feel. Bummer. People making choices and how they feel. Willfully sinning because how they feel. Amen? Listen. The spirit in you is greater than he's in the world. Amen? If you're in communication and you're in fellowship, in the spirit, things are different. But if you're only living out of the head, you'll constantly stumble over your tongue. Amen? Willful sin is serious. We can't just throw it aside and think, oh, that's okay, God will forgive me. No, you're going to still reap. And some people will spend their life trying to outrun their reaping when we shouldn't have to. Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you and we ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace of everything that we've done that has broken covenant vows and anything else that's offended you. We want to please you, but Lord, help us to examine ourselves that we may be counted worthy as genuine. Genuine, not pretenders. Not self-promoting, not puffed up, but humbled and fully surrendered to you. So, Lord, the word that you've released to us, this prophetic word in preparation, because it's one of the enemy's ploys, 
Let it grow deep into us and bring to remembrance what you have spoken to us tonight, that we may overcome all things and walk away from willfully sinning. In Jesus' name. Anybody said amen?